Hunger in New York City by Simon Ortiz was first published in 1976 in his collection Going for the Rain. The poem contrasts the America exemplified by New York City to what Ortiz calls the real America, which is the native America of indigenous people and the indigenous principle they represent. One of the purposes of Ortiz's work is to define native America and to call for its survival. Hunger in New York City is a variation on this theme as it tells the story of how dehumanizing city life can be in its separation from Mother Earth. This poem tells the story of engaging fully with a hunger that takes on the magnitude of a symbolic opponent and ends with a prayer to bless me. The alienation of the individual in the city that this hunger represents is not, however, a solely Native American experience, but it is perhaps possible for the rest of us to understand through the Native American experience of the land as mother how to heal the wound of alienation. The poem is in five stanzas, ranging from the four-line first stanza to the eight-line final stanza. There is a variation in line length from the closing line of two words to the longest line with nine words. The poem does not follow any traditional form or consistent framework. Instead, it is the story that is being told that seems to shape the poem. In the first stanza, hunger is introduced as an external force. The second explores the reasons for this relationship with hunger. Hunger in the third stanza becomes nagging, asking pointed questions, merging itself with guilt. The fourth stanza explains why the questions hunger asks cannot find answers in the city. The final stanza presents a response to hunger, if not the answers to its questions. The speaker initially directs the story in the poem to the reader, but also allows it to spring from his own personal experience. This is achieved by his use of the second person pronoun you. At the end of fourth stanza, however, the you shifts to the first person I, as the persona places himself fully in his experience of hunger. Let's see the summary of the poem. The poem begins with the disturbing image of hunger as a creature that can crawl into you. But although it seems to be presented in line 1 as something external, in the second line we understand that it is actually crawling from somewhere, out of your muscles. Thus, hunger is not located in your spirit or your soul or even in your mind. It comes to you through the tension in your muscles. The final two lines of the stanza offer alternatives through the use of the word or. In effect, this hunger must come from somewhere before crawling into you, out of your own muscles. The images presented are first of the concrete of the city itself, but perhaps this hunger comes from the thought of the land beneath the concrete of the city or it is in the wind forced against you through the concrete of the buildings. Your muscles tense against any of these things. This is how the hunger enters you through your physical response to the city. Once hunger has access to you and you have identified it, it begins to demand things. The poet personifies hunger in the stanza, giving it the power to ask. At first, these demands seem reasonable and small enough, but then the memories hunger feeds on become more specific. In line 8, the hunger places such emphasis on holding somebody's hand that it seems to want not just the memory of human contact, but human contact itself. And then it wants to go home where the real human contact of the Native American world can be made through its ritual dances and songs and gods who listen, the world you know. 
In short, in New York City, the speaker of this poem is an alien. By creating the desire for the world you know, hunger searches you out. And once it has you, it asks you the kinds of questions family asks. Again, at first, these seem simple enough and easy to answer. But in line 15, the simple question calls up the power of hunger expanded full force in line 16. This time, hunger takes you further into the world you know that you care to travel into your own responsibility to that world. The guilt that follows from trying to answer that question pushes the persona of the poem back from his memories and his desire for his home back into the concrete of the city. The images of the next lines are physically distressing. Assaults on human senses expressed through adjectives oily and blazing and the noun shrieks these images recall and build on the poem's beginning physical images of the muscles in response to the concrete and the wind in lines 3 and 4. Finally, the word cannot appears at the end of line 20. While the meaning is not yet fully disclosed, it is clear that there is nothing that the concrete and wind and windows and shrieks can do for the persona. In fact, the repetition of cannot with addition of truly speaks with certainty that the city is not the answer to the hunger the speaker has felt inside himself. Indeed, the repetition of cannot begun in lines 20-21 takes force in lines 21-22 with the repetition of hunger. This creates a chant and inverts the lines with the quality of prayer. Up to this point, the persona has been speaking objectively using the second person pronoun you. This has allowed him to speak about himself as well as to speak about experiences that a reader might participate in. Finally, however, the persona accepts his experience as belonging completely to himself. It is the position of the persona that he has made every possible effort to feed his hunger with things he could find in the city. The speaker begins to feed himself, not his hunger, softly with song in a ritual reminder of the living presence of things that surround him. As a result, the almost angry images of the wind and shrieks in the preceding stanza are understood to be at least as much in him as in the city. His singing calms this angry response to the city and reminds him that the soul of Mother Earth, if not her presence, surrounds him. He concludes the poem, which has become a prayer, with the plea to be blessed by her. Now let us discuss the important themes of this poem. The Native American speaker in Hunger in New York City describes his search for identity in terms of hunger or a physical need for sustenance. At first, this hunger seems to be creeping in from the outside, from the concrete or the land, but as the poem continues into the third stanza, his longing asks questions of the speaker. How are you? Where are you? The voice of this longing may remind us of our parents. Identity is such a huge topic, it is almost impossible to grasp. Have you eaten well? The voice asks the Native American speaker, starting with easy questions. But quickly, the Native American living in New York City must confront a larger issue. Have you done what you as a person of your people is supposed to do? The scope of this search suddenly broadens over two cultures and into his people's past. The second theme one can find in this poem is custom and tradition. In the middle of this poem lies a haunting question. Have you done what you as a person of your people is supposed to do? Though the poem makes no specific mention of the poet's ethnicity or Native American roots, there is an underlying theme of custom and tradition that informs the work 
as the speaker tries to find his way around the unfamiliar new york landscape unable to answer clearly these questions of heritage the speaker explains that he has been looking in all the wrong places the oily wind the blazing windows the shrieks of automation cannot truly cannot answer for that hunger if there are no fulfilling answers for the speaker in this new land and culture where can he find something to feed his spirit the answer comes from his past and his people's past unsatisfied with the barriers city life places between man and the natural world the speaker returns to the humble presence of his heritage in the last stanza hoping that the traditions of his fathers will help feed his hunger for identity another theme that we find in this poem is that of nature the speaker finds a cure for his hunger in the final stanza i am feeding myself with the humble presence of all around me i am feeding myself with your soul my mother earth a native american living in the city after many years of concrete and oily wind separating him from the natural world the speaker returns again to the source of all living things as we know the indigenous people of north america have a profound relationship with the earth regarding its many plants and creatures as much more than natural resources to take and use the balance between humans and nature requires a spiritual respect a humble grateful attitude which returns as much as it receives just as concrete pours over concrete and layers of smog coat of his windows Years of disrespect for the earth have accumulated until the speaker is haunted with an indescribable empty feeling. What the persona learns is that under these urban layers still lives the natural spirit which can give his life meaning, which has been giving his people's lives meaning for centuries. The speaker ends the poem by asking Mother Earth for peace of mind and spirit. make me cool and humble bless me